Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Barbara Tint with the Applied Improvisation Network. And I am here to share a conversation with you uh, with Ella Aman, who is a longstanding friend and colleague uh, based in Berlin, Germany. And I've invited Ella into a conversation with us because her work has been on resilience and applied improvisation. And if there was ever a time when we needed to draw from our resilience, collectively it would be now. So Ella, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Barbara. Um, nice to meet these times, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so you probably know some people who are watching this and many who you don't. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your work and how resilience has come into being during this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working in the field of resilience now since uh, you know, 25 years and um, connecting the, the work of resilience with applied improv also um, since 20 years, 25 years professionally. And um, yeah, in these days, uh, it's exactly what we um, need right now. We need the capacity of resilience, so the natural capacity of uh, the body, the mind, the, psy um, the psychological capacities of resilience and um, deal with crisis and deal with the unexpected. Um, and the moment of crisis is the moment when we can't move on with all the um, routines or habits or resources we have. And uh, when times of challenge, uh, when the time is challenging us right now, and we experience the feeling of, oh my God, I'm so overloaded, I'm stressed, I'm, I'm not able to, to know what to do in the next moment. Then you have this little uh, moment of a potential crisis and uh, normally the body and the system and um, the mind is uh, capable to be creative and open, start learning, do improvising. And then you find your way through this moment and it doesn't have to become a real crisis. But when the circumstances and maybe your physical or also psychological health is not really stable, then uh, um, a crisis like now can really uh, keep you out of the balance. And then you go into this mode of crisis. So like um, maybe you're familiar with this, um, uh, the path of the crisis, like you, you start with a shock and then you deny the crisis and then you get anger. And then uh, later on you go through the, um, a depression and then uh, from there you can do a restart or a new start. Mm. So we have different phases of, of the crisis uh, and that's what we're experiencing right now uh, in Germany. We, we uh, are kind of in the phase of denying now mm. <laughs> after six or seven weeks of being in a shock. And now a lot of people are in this kind of mode of, well nothing happened, everything is okay, we don't need coaching, no resilience. It's not a topic, you know, this is exactly happening. You, you, you can really nicely see how all the curve is now mm. <laughs> walking around these uh, different phases of crisis. And at the same time, I know a lot of people who don't experience a real crisis. So that's really a very interesting um, phenomena uh, I can see right now. I'm teaching uh, resilience now since over 12 years. And what we can see, um, people who are very well trained in resilience or give resilience trainings, they have much more capacities to deal in, uh, with these uh, days. Also people who do improv for a long time. So this is such a benefit for people who have these skills to mm. manage to, or to deal with the unexpected mm. things. Yeah, and to have your improvisational skills really awake in these days. Mm. Thanks for that. In, in, what I'm hearing in some ways is the way you've described the cycle of crisis also sounds like the cycle of grief um, that, that people often go through and that people are in different places in that cycle. Uh, and, and one of the things I'm seeing is people somehow feeling like there's something wrong with them if they're not further along, you know, um, and, and that it sounds to me like part of the work is supporting people wherever they are, which is also a very uh, foundation improvisational principle. I'm wondering if you can give us sort of your definition of resilience or what are the what are the qualities uh, of resilience that you would identify? 
Yeah, so um, when, when I work with resilience, it's um, a very simple definition. It's the quality uh, or it's the capacity of tolerance uh, you have um, when you deal with pressure or when you deal with something that is, um, you know, we say um, it, it's a window of tolerance. So your, your system, so it's the homeostasis of your nervous system. Um, and um, so when you are stressed, the, the sympathicus is becoming active, and so you go into this fight or freeze, uh, freeze um, uh, mode. And um, after this, um, acting this stress out, then normally you go into a mode of um, relaxation, and the parasympathicus goes down, the vagus nerve becomes active. And so and then you find a good homeostasis around this. And um, and here is the window of tolerance that we call the resilience, and the resilience can be small. Or it can be bigger so to tolerate uh, stress, and um, this is one 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 possibility to to um, define or to, uh, give a definition for resilience, and this is uh, one that's important for me when I when I work in the field of uh, health, when I work in the field of innovation or culture, then uh, the definition of resilience is a little bit different. But mm. this is the principle of you have have a situation where where um, where the where you have pressure in the system and the system is able after the pressure to bounce back into the normal state. Mm. Yeah. And uh, from when when I see it from the from the theoretical um, perspective of a mo of a model, I have this um, axis of change and stability, and resilience is the capacity in the middle that you find a situative a balance between. Uh, change and stability, change and stability, or agil um, you know, you have your ag agility in the system, you are flexible, you can move, you can, you know, your body can, can be very flexible and adaptable. And on the other side, you need stability, your system has form, has structure, and this is um, the, the real time learning in between these fields of um, stability and agility. That's mm. the, the, my definition of resilience mm. at the moment. Yeah, thank you. And what I what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that it's physical, it's mm -hmm. psychological, mm -hmm. um, intellectual, right? That mm -hmm. that it it's something that we process on on many levels. Exactly. Yeah. So the interdisciplinary uh, or applied re uh, research uh, around resilience is, is really a very wide range. So. Your your um, your facial system, for example, uh, you, you you talk about resilience. The brain is uh, a part of your resilience capacity. To mm -hmm. um, how, do, how do you say it's the capacity of uh, restructuring your brain after an injury, for example? Um, the nervous system is a very important part, and um, so it's always a combination between physical and psychological, and also personality. Mm. So the personality also a very important um, aspect of resilience because um, every person is reacting differently and have different um, personal um, or psychological needs and uh, when these needs are not served then um, everybody is reacting differently to mm. to what um, stressful so things that are stressful for you can be great for me you know I can experience this right now in the crisis of uh, in this corona crisis I know so many people who are really uh, um, flourishing in this yeah. time right now. It's unbelievable. Right. right. You know, and other people really blah, shut down, you know, people right. who really need to be very active with other people who need to be interactive and need a lot of social contact. They are suffering so much. And more quiet people, people who like to be alone, more intellectual people know what to do, you know. They use the time for reorganizing their lives. So it's so different how, how people cope with this uh, situation. Right, right, right. And, and that speaks to some of what I was thinking about before, which is, you know, it's, it's a fairly human phenomenon to compare our experiences, right? And for the people who are struggling, seeing all the people who are thriving, it can add to a sense mm -hmm. of, you know, um, uh, dis-ease because, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people kind of what's wrong with me why can't I write great, you know, the great novel I've been wanting to write all this time. And, yeah, um, yeah. and that frame you offer between stability and change is really uh, quite significant right now because we've all had to change very quickly. And so for a lot of people, um, change is 
very active and stability may be very fragile, um, which is why, you know, I think we are in what you would call a collective crisis. Does that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we have, you know, um, we have a statistic from uh, from our diagnostics. So um, we're working with a diagnostic um, diagnostic tool, and from there we can see that, um, for example, my baby boomer generation, we have more people in our German uh, culture, but also in the German talk, um, um, are more intellectual and value oriented, and more in their brains. From, from nature, you know, when they wake up in the morning, they're first in the brain, and then later they go into the body and the feeling and or into the emotions, and then they become social. So there are different ways of experiencing the world. And in Germany, we have a lot of high intellectual, analytical people, or high value, uh, value oriented, because we grew up in a, in a time where everything was predictable. Uh, we are looking for quality, so looking for the details, looking for structure. We are architects, we design in in way of um, engineers. You know, <laughs> that's very funny to see. And we work in a company, um, and we see in the statistics a lot of people with these high value or analytical uh, skills. They need a lot of safety, they need a lot of planning, they need a lot of structure or good information to feel safe. You know, to feel um, positive, to feel resilient about what's going on. And right now, when these people don't have these informations anymore, yeah. and you don't have anybody who gives you direction or orientation, and uh, or enough space or time to, to collect the information you need or to structure it, then these people are so stressed. And in the last 10 years, where the Booker world um, becomes more and more, more a topic also in our um, business world, these people are really freaking out because 20 years ago, um, to be good and to be um, successful at work, um, they had a lot of time, they could go in details, they could really enjoy the way they wanted to work. And in these days, you know, they say, hey, 70% is okay, work agile, and then iterate from there and do some moves. And, you know, and they say, no, 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 I can't do that. You know, I have to, I have to dive deep, deep into, into information. And, uh, and on the other side, when I work for a startup, then we have a lot of uh, creative, active people who like to change. They are looking for inspiration all the time. You know, a lot of improv people are high active and, and creative. And so it can't be crazy enough for them to be, to be happy, you know, okay. and, and to improvise uh, and, and to be with the unknown the whole time. And since we have this data, it's, it's much more easier for us to see uh, what is the culture we're working in how much improvisational um, um, culture do we have? Uh, are the people happy with the, with the way we are? Uh, improv because there are also different styles of impro to improvise. And um, that makes it for us much easier to, to um, connect um, psychological needs also to um, the, um, what people need to be, feel safe and, and um, yeah, to be strong and also to have their kind of personal way to improvise and that's very different for person from person, yeah. person yeah yeah i just want to make sure um people know what you mean when you say the hookah world so the, the volatile uncertain complex ambiguous world is the term VUCA, and also for people who don't know, that was the theme of our applied improvisation network conference in berlin in what year was that 2013. 2013, <laughs> where you were the uh, one of the co-hosts of that conference. So thank you um, many years later for that beautiful effort. Um, uh -huh. Seven, eight years ago. Yeah. I know, it's hard to believe it's been that long. So what kinds of things are you thinking people can do right now to strengthen their resilience because resilience isn't something you either have or you don't right resilience is something you can build um you can develop yeah what kind of things at the same time yeah mm -hmm. yeah so what kinds of things can people be doing right now to strengthen their resilience during these times <clears throat> yeah so from the from the point of the nervous system the first thing you should always do is what we do right now so reach out for people find ways to connect. And when you connect, find ways to connect with an option of have a picture, a visual connection to um, a, another person because the nervous system really needs 
um, visual signs of a smile, eyes. Uh, even if, if we with Zoom have to have to make a little bit like this, so that, that I can see your mouth and your eyes and your 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 uh, how do you call this wrinkles? Oh, yeah. yeah, the creases, the creases. Very the important to have wrinkles. Botox is not 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 helping at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, and so th this is really very, very important. Uh, Stephen Porch has uh, made a great video a few weeks ago in, in March and, and he was really pointing out, reach out for people. Um, and even if you just can hear a voice that can be beautiful also, um, because the, the voice gives us also um, a feeling of being connected, um, be in a state of um, social relief right now. Because when you have a lot of stress, um, and you're really, really good in self-regulation, then it's much um, in these days for you. But not everybody has this capacity for self-regulation all the time. The most people in our society are uh, needing the co-regulation, and co-regulation is what we need um, to calm down, to calm down the stress. And this is um, one of the most important things, reach out. For and um, the next thing what you can do is um, create rituals. So this is also what gives your day a structure. More um, stability. Find the, hmm? more stability to kind of sorry more stability. Yeah, exactly. This is, yeah. 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 Well, when, when the book of world is like this, then then you need to to look for where's form, where's structure, little things that give you over the day so don't find fun things you like to do and what's good for you but do it regularly find a rhythm to do it and um, so slow down the super improvisational um, uh, uh, become a little more structured so that that, that can really help and um, this gives gives a lot of safety another thing um, I would I would um, recommend is see that there is a good body and brain connection so especially when you're at home, you know, it's care about that, that you stay connected to your body. Because when you just go into your brain and you're always sitting only in front of the computer or just laying down or watching TV or something, um, from there, um, when, the, when the system is not really opening up, so when you just crawl under your bed all the time, then the psychological uh, system will go down a little bit. So what I can recommend is do some power posing in between, you know. Have this yes and um, gestures to try to open up. Yeah, just stay in the room for one or two minutes. Open, open, open your arms. Do a little bit qigong or do some some exercises. Do some yoga. It's ten minutes a day, five minutes a day. That's enough. But give your system every day a little bit. Open up. Look, look that also the the whole um, yes and principle inside that that it can wake uh, up every day for a few minutes. So that gives you a little bit more uh, better homo, um, status of your, home, um, your hormones, 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 um, hormone, yeah, yeah, hormone. And um, these are little, little things, but it's, um, it's also to, to, you told me today um, before you, you go regularly for, for a walk outside with your dog. You know, it's, it's great when you have a little pet, so that, that helps you to, to stay uh, in, in motion. Yeah. So stay in motion. Go and go to the internet, and reach out for one of these dancing groups, for example, you know, dance in the kitchen, do something, you know, but don't forget your body is so yeah. important that you stay connected to, to the whole system. Yeah. And um, yeah, stay connected also with fun and play. This is one of the most important things. Say, see that the nervous system is really has its play times. I don't know how it is uh, um, in, in America, but we have so many beautiful um, improv um, sessions online. You yeah. can do improv every day in your room. It's, it's beautiful. You, you find people to play with, you find people to talk with, doing funny exercises. And, and I think this right now is a good time to just have improv also for fun. You know, yeah. We do a lot of applied improv and we're very serious. And, you know, but I think I recommend in these days just just play and, and, and do something mm, yeah. re regularly and um, th this is just the and then basic needs are coming you know food drinking um, and 
take care about the, the stuff around. Uh, yeah, um, when there's too much stress, you know what's happening, drinking, smoking, whatever is your, your little, um, your, your little, um, how would you say it in English, um, compensation? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and just sometimes just grieve, regulate yourself, um, and then wait one or two minutes till you take the next cake or take yeah. the next chocolate or take the next trip. So bring time into the system. Yeah. When, you, when you have these times, you have a lot of experience of impact. You know, it's very tight. The system is tight. It, there's a lot of um, fear in the system or whatever is um, happening to yours. Just always like give space, open up and give time. And yeah. it's like, um, this is the, a basic work which you can do also in, in, in trauma. Just um, give your give yourself more space. This is very very important. Mm. And sometimes when you really have a panic attack or something is happening, you do the basics. Like I don't know if you know so some tapping techniques, so basic yeah. tap techniques, or what's very you know something like this. You know, we offer this stuff, uh, this stuff, well, these exercises. We have regular online meetings where we where we do this stuff with um, with, with people so they can go online and Ola is uh, a friend of mine, she's doing a lot of um, um, hypno work also or doing this tapping regularly every second day. She has a course in doing it. Doing it this time. And um, all very simple things also like, you know, be in contact, just feel here, I'm here, I'm there, uh, call things by name, you know, when, when you really too oh, suppressed well. or you have a look. Yeah, elbow finger, nose, you know, hair. It's, uh, um, it's about orientation. This is what we do when we, when we are doing improv a lot, you know, refining um, orientation. It's, it's so important to know who I am, where I am, um, what do I feel? Okay, where am I? Where's my butt? Oh, okay, here's my finger, um, here's my nail, you know. Like bringing your um, consciousness into the moment is so important because the brain in these days when you get fear or stress, it's running away and you go into your fear and your fantasies or what can happen and then you are uh, not here anymore. So everything that helps you to orient yourself, play improv with yourself, you know. Play, I'm a tree and I'm the bird on the tree and I'm the, I'm the sun on the bird that is on the tree or something, you know, play with yourself, do whatever, solo improv, um, but uh, do something that, that um, gives you the moment um, of, of uh, um, mindfulness back, so all that the moment for the moment, yeah. Yeah, so helpful, I, and you know, as we look at the cause of, of trauma and challenge being physiological, emotional, psychological, intellectual, spiritual, then, then the remedies have to also be in all of those planes. So the physical, the relational, all the different ways we can bring ourselves back. And I, I'm thinking a lot about the, the really important improv principle of being here focused in the moment and seeing what comes next. Because I think a lot of the anxiety that people are carrying is about, you know, the future. And that's really anxiety is about the future. And so all the things you're talking yep. about are helping us to be in the present now, in this moment now. Um, and, yeah strengthen our kind of internal support for that um yeah so basic inner work this is now the time for inner work and yeah. and um to really find all these connections there, there's a lot of stuff more what you can do yeah. intellectually but yeah. i wouldn't recognize uh, uh, recommend first like doing all this intellectual coaching exercises like uh, right yeah you can do that write down three things that went well today you know all the stuff we have these in books you know everybody has a helping self-help book in, in in the shelf but you can all but but what's much more important than just starting intellectually working with the brain is start with the body so yeah. this is so important yes. we connect to to the, yes. we connect the system to the now yeah yes, yes. So I'm wondering if there's um, any kind of short uh, improv activity that you would do with me right now that would be an example of something we could do to strengthen our resilience. Yeah, we can. We can do. Uh, maybe we, we can do a little um, 
we can do a little, a little combination between a power pose and storytelling. Okay, great. Yeah, so that, that's a very simple thing I do with clients a lot. So, um, Barbara, you start. Uh, um, we can see. So maybe we are, uh, let's say we are in a, in a store or something, you know, okay. and, and you bought something that was really, really, um, you, you were, were not happy with what you bought. Okay. So I should, should I start? And uh, you're very angry at the beginning. Okay. Huh? okay. So, okay. You, you, you start the... very angry. Okay. Make yourself small and, and, and very tight. You know? okay. And then now, uh, always when I um, say, oh, let me check this and I put this paper here, then this is a sign for you to put your hands behind, find a reason to lay back and then try to be angry. Okay. Solution, okay. And see what's okay. changed. Okay. okay. All right. Good. So, um, hello. Hi. How can I help you? Well, I'm very upset. I bought this milk and I've been needing this milk and it's sour and I can't use it in my coffee and there's no other milk in the store. Oh, well, that's so interesting. So I, I write that down. So milk is sour. So can, we, can you tell me a little bit more about what happened? So when did you buy the milk? I bought it yesterday. Yeah, so what was the experience when you bought the milk? How was it here in the store? Just say. Well, I mean, everybody was very nice and I really was looking forward to the milk because I yeah, have milk at home. Yeah, yeah. Who helped you to get the milk? Was it my colleague or uh, who helped you with that? Yeah, it was this guy named Jim. Oh, Jim. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has, he has two little kids. It's very beautiful. So that the kids sometimes come to the store and then he's playing with the kids and the milk. And so that, that's so nice. So, um, yeah. So what, what happened then after you went home? Well, so I was so excited to have coffee with milk, which I haven't had in weeks because I haven't been able to find milk. And then I poured it and it was sour. And after all this time of waiting to have milk in my coffee, I couldn't, I couldn't have milk in my coffee. Yeah, so I made some milk. Did you maybe put the milk into the sun or something so that it... No. Was... Sure? No. I did not maybe. put the milk in the sun. Uh-huh. So... Are you saying it's um, my fault? Huh? Are Sorry? It's my fault? No, 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 no. I, I'm just exploring a little bit what happened in, in detail, you know. Because uh, it's very important that I make these notes, so I can I can go to the to the um, person who um, I got the milk from, so to see if we have uh, more problems with other milk. Yeah, um, we don't want anyone else to have this problem. Yeah. So, Barbara, how do you feel when you when you do this? How long can you stay angry? It's very hard, you know. I mean, like, I feel like I'm on a like a, you know a Caribbean island, relaxing. It's very hard to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was trying to be, I was smiling. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, I, do, I do this a lot with my clients. You know, it's a very simple improv exercise like this um, when you bring stuff back and, and you have these conversations. And normally they, they go into anger, 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 and then you have this funny conversation. But when you give these signs of uh, relaxation, then it's uh, when you do it for one or two minutes and then the people try to stay angry. It's so fun. And yeah. They can't. It's impossible, great. you know, right. and this is what, what you can do, for example, when it's about so what's happening with my life in the Corona crisis, how many people will become ill when you maybe have this conversation also uh, online with, with people who are really freaking out. Just give them, you know, there are different possibilities, you know, this is a little provocative when you just, you know, somebody's telling you and then you make like this, but, but it's, um, you, you know, it's enough. You know, Right. Lay back a little bit in the chair, for example, you know, you can, you can do also do like this or what's really nice, put your legs on the, on the table, do like this, you know, make it in little steps, step by step, and then from here very slowly and then after two or three minutes go into this and you will see the other person go slowly relax and relax and relax. And then you can... Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's... 
that, that makes a big difference you know, when you're sitting here in front of the uh, Zoom and you always know when you say, mm -hmm. okay, I can right now not um, intellectually reach to the person because he's so stressed. But when you are good self-regulated, then you can open this, um, um, your own resilience and you can your own resilience and self-regulation uh, to the other person, then you can co-regulate. Mm. And that's not, and, and that's a very easy little technique to calm down yourself, relax yourself, and then give this big invitation for the other person also to, yeah. to change the way you're talking about things. Yeah. And that's one fun little exercise, yeah. Part of what I'm taking away also is that in this absence of our physical ability to connect with each other, um, that it's more and more important for us to physically connect with ourselves so that my ability to relate to you, even through the screen, is based on a, a groundedness and a connection. Um, I know I'm struggling with the desire to connect with people and the um, overwhelmingness I'm feeling about so much screen time. So sometimes yeah. I feel like I have to choose between connecting and having my brain explode. Um, and so this kind of work, you know, keeping me grounded physically uh, is really important to allow me to, to maintain connection. Yeah, yeah. And also experiment a little bit with the way um, standing, sitting, change positions. What I sometimes do, I just change the, the high of the computer, you know, that also I'm, I have from one conversation to the next different uh, different um, angles. Mm. But my system is not always in the freeze mode, you know, it's, it, these are little things, but the body is the core in, in, in these days, you know, when we really want to solve this um, problem of stress and, and stay with them, we, we have to work with the body. That, that's really the, the most important thing. And the connection and have have a good connection, you know, eye contact and, and take care about the voice. For example, when, when you would talk to somebody and your nervous system is recognizing that the person is maybe too fast all the time and all the time and talking and talking and talking and, and you know, um, it's a, it's a, we call this, this overcoupling. So then you should never listen longer than maybe half a half minute and, and then you see or hear this, say, oh, uh, hey, hey, Klaus, that, that, that's a cool thing what you said, like, um, and then interrupt, you know, because then the people normally go into the story and of the past, of the stress, mm. and then bring them back to the moment and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I can understand that that was very um, a stressful yesterday. Well, how is it today? Tell me, how is it now? Tell me a little bit about how, what, what you are experiencing now in the moment, you know. This is really bring in this improv mindset again from here now, because then they have to step out of the spiral. Because yeah. when you're very nice, very polite, and you're listening five minutes, somebody's going into the spiral, yes. then you go into the spiral, yes, and then the story goes into the spiral. Right. Or, you know? And this well, is what we, where we have to be very professional in these days with, us, yes. uh, with ourselves. Well, one of the things that helped when I was doing this was also your voice. I mean, you were very even, very soothing, very calm, very positive. Um, so you were listening to me, but you weren't hooking into my anger, right? You were, you were helping me go forward in a, on a different path is how I felt. And, and so I think also the relational quality of what we can do for each other during stressful times uh -huh. is to provide some of that calming uh, response patterning. Yeah, from the improv point of view, I, I'd, um, I switched into the mode of tell me more, go more in details, you know. Uh, I, uh, it's, it's not advanced, it's more detail. Uh, expand, know? color, and color. So the yeah, color, 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 advanced. You call it color. color exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so beautiful. I and feel this like is, I, the intervention thing is very nice. Yeah, <laughs> well, I could talk to you all day, um, but I know it's nighttime there and I want to respect your time and I have a feeling we'll have more opportunities to to bring you in and um, thank you so much for the time and uh, I'm glad you're staying safe and I know Germany has slowly reopened um, so we'll be watching to see what happens there and um, yeah. whether it's during this crisis or not your 
skills and your knowledge are very valuable. I know you've written books on resilience and I'm waiting for the English translation of it. Um, and- um, One translated. Yeah. One, yeah, Good. it's Good. a start. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much, time. Barbara. Bye. For Bye. playing with me. It was so nice. <laughs> yeah. So Ella Aman so from Berlin, Berlin. Germany. Um, we will Bye. see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.